So following on from the previous video, we were trying to sketch this function here. Um, we, we got to, us, to, uh, to this stage here where, where we know that dead on zero, the whole function breaks down. But just to the right of zero, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, whatever, one, um, it's going to be a very, very big negative number. So it's going to do, it's going to do something like this. Okay. And then we, we also know that it crosses at one. So, so maybe a graph will look something like this. Maybe. Okay. Now we need to consider what happens when x is very, very big. So if you look at our function here, this here is our function. Hang on. This here is our function here. So, so you wanting to know what happens when x is very, very big, it, it really boils down to this thing here. You, you wanting to know what happens when x is very, very big, boils down to this. You, in effect, want to know the limit as x tends towards infinity of this thing here. So you wanting to know what happens in, in this region here really boils down to you trying to solve this here. Okay? Because you, in effect, want to know the limit of, of uh, the limit of this thing as x tends to infinity. So you wanting to know what's up here boils down to this. So this is what we're trying to find out. Okay? Um, but here's the thing. The problem here is that when you look at this, the natural log of x and the square root of x, they're both climbing. They're both heading towards infinity. This one here is also climbing. This one here is climbing towards infinity. This one here is also climbing towards infinity. If, if you look at the square root of x, um, y equals uh, x squared looks like this. Okay, so um, so so the, the inverse of this, the inverse of square... The, the inverse of this here would be square root of x. So, so remember the, the inverse is a reflection along the y equals x. So it will look something like this. We deliberately discard the negative version because we want to create what's called a function. Okay. So, so basically, looking at this, you can see that this is always climbing. It's always heading to in this direction. So when when you flip it, sorry. The, well, well, when when you flip it, 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 this thing here is really this. This really is indeed climbing towards infinity. It is climbing, okay? But um, but here's the thing. If you try and evaluate this here, one thing divided by another thing, um, they're, they're both climbing. So so it, it is quite hard to evaluate this here. Uh, currently, with, with our knowledge, uh, with our current knowledge, I, I cannot explain to you why, why, um, why this thing, well, the, the the thing is, as it as it turns out, that um, this thing here climbs a lot faster. Well, this thing here is climbing towards infinity. The the natural log of x is also climbing towards infinity. But the thing is, this thing here um, climbs towards infinity faster than this thing here. So when you when you when you draw it on the same graph, I, I don't know, it, it will probably look something like this. This one here will, will zoom off. This one here, they are both climbing towards infinity. They are both very slow. They are both climbing towards infinity at a very, very slow rate. But the thing is, in, in comparison, when you, compare, when, when you compare the two, this one here is actually zooming off towards infinity a lot faster than this one, this one here. So, so what you will have is that this thing here will... Uh, will it, yes it does climb towards infinity but it will be a lot slower than this one here so so when you choose a, a very very big number so so the the trick here really is to choose a very very big number so uh, so put a very big number into here and into here um uh, what, what what i'm trying to say here is that um currently our with our current knowledge we we are not good enough to um, to to see why this one here uh, climbs a lot faster than this one here. I with our current knowledge, I, I cannot explain why this one here climbs a lot faster than this one here. In the future, if you want to evaluate this, in the future you will learn what's called uh, L'Hopital's rule. So with with L'Hopital's rule, it, you 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 are you are trying to in a way work out this. Okay, but with L'Hopital's rule here, you um, uh, well, don't worry about this. Um, this is for another time. But with L'Hopital's rule here, um, when you try to evaluate this here, he's uh, he's saying that if you if you differentiate this, 
and then if you differentiate this and then try to find out the limit of this okay so sometimes uh, sometimes the um, when you differentiate this sometimes when you differentiate this uh, and then differentiate this here um, this thing becomes easier to evaluate now if, if you still can't evaluate this then you will differentiate it again okay and then you will differentiate this thing again and then try and evaluate this uh, and see if you can find out the limit of this now if this still is too difficult to find then you will differentiate it again um, and then and then you would differentiate this again and then try to evaluate this and if this doesn't work you you can keep on differentiating it but so, most of the time um, when you when you differentiate it it becomes easier to um, to find the limit well this one here is quite difficult to find so what you do is you differentiate it it will give you this but don't, don't worry about this this this, this is another time but uh, what I'm trying to show you is that with our current knowledge at the moment we we are finding it hard to um, to find the limits of this with our current knowledge. Okay, um, uh, yeah. So, but you can use L'Hopital's rule here. So blah blah blah. Don't worry about this. Okay, but but blah blah blah. blah. You can use um, you, by using L'Hopital's rule here. You you will get to this stage here. And here you can see that it, it does indeed head towards zero. The limit will be zero because because hang on because square root of x is less. Well, will will be less than less than x as x tends towards infinity, because this thing here, well, this thing here will be small, a lot smaller than this thing here. So if you, it's like you having a, a an average number divided by a really, really, really big number here, because the bottom number is so big in comparison to the to the numerator. Overall, it will be very, very small. The point I'm trying to make is that when you get to this stage here, you can see that the limit here tends towards zero. Okay, but let's 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 go back to where we were before. Um, even so, so at the moment we we don't we our knowledge is that we um, we don't have uh, the knowledge of L'Hopital's rule, so we can't use that. So what currently what all that we can do here is put a big number into here. So let's let's put uh, ten to the power of one hundred into this thing here. So 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 we. We, we, our knowledge is not good enough yet, so this is the, the only method that we, we can use at the moment. So just put a big number into here, okay? So uh, so uh, so natural log of this big number here. Remember, this goes down here, so it will become this. So so hang on. So looking at looking at our function here, put put a big number into here, ten to the power of one hundred into here, and then ten to the power of one hundred into here. Okay, so that will then give you this, but then the hundred here can go down here, and then that will give you this. This thing here is actually a very small number. Okay, it's actually this thing here. So you've got so you've got one hundred times two point roughly two point three divided by a massive number down here. Okay, that's 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 like that's that's a massive number here. So it's like um, it's like 230 divided by by a massive number here. Um, so so which will be which will be approximately be zero. So what we know so far is hang on, going back to our graph. Hang on, going back to our graph here. So uh, so what we know now is hang on, going back to our graph here. Hang on. Uh, okay. So what we know is that uh, just to the right of zero, it's negative. Um, it, it will be a very very negative big number and then it crosses here and then it will head towards towards zero it, it crosses here so maybe it maybe it might do something like this or maybe well I'm gonna guess that it will do something like this it will go over and then it will head towards towards zero that's what that's what we're guessing at the moment okay in, in the next video we, we're gonna consider the um, the first derivative Find out when the gradient is zero. So, uh, so if, um, if 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 the graph really does do this here, then then there, then there should be a, a turning point here and and maybe here as well. If if it uh, if the graph would if the graph does this here, then there should only be one one turning point here. So so here if the graph does this, then you know the uh, where the f prime uh, equals zero only at one place. Now, if it does this here, hang on. Well, remember, we know it has to head towards towards zero here. Uh, it has to head towards zero here. 
Um, so if, if it does this here, then 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 f prime should have two two places where f prime equals zero, mainly here and and here. Okay, but I think well I think it's going to do something like, like this. Okay, so there should only be one one place where f prime equals zero. Okay, but we will investigate in the next video.